Please welcome Nick Kukuru. What a great day. What a great time to be here. And I got to tell you, I am from MasterCard, and what a great company to work with, along with Dell. What a great experience. Are you all having fun? You all getting the information you need? Okay. Come on. That's, come on. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. So here's the deal. This is what you know about MasterCard, right? But believe it or not, we are not a credit card company. Let me say that again. We are not a credit card company. We are a technology company. We provide the network and the rails for these things to work. But you want to think of MasterCard? You want to think of this when you think about it. Connected car? Do you think MasterCard? But we're there. You want to think about this? How about just using a ride share as we look forward into this renaissance that Michael talked about? We can actually unlock your car for you. Make it work. Hey, do you want to use that key fob to purchase something? We can do that too. We can also let you buy it at a gas pump. This is MasterCard. We can also let you do what? Go phone to phone. Transfer funds. We can also let you use a wearable. Again, that's the Internet of Things. All these endpoints that you start to see, we can let you order groceries pay for them, and then go pick them up. Not to mention, we can get your commute faster. And my personal favorite, because I love road trips, is this. I don't have to carry 10 pounds of quarters with me when I have to go on a road trip with the family. I can just tap and go at the laundromat. This is MasterCard, because what I'm saying to you is this. MasterCard, we're a technology company. And our goal is a world beyond cash. Our goal is inclusive growth. And again, what we look at as a technology company is we need the technology to be there. We also need to make sure that our customers who hold that MasterCard, our businesses that work with us, have a truly good experience, a positive experience. So we've actually changed our mindset from saying we've got technology that should meet what people need and we turn it around saying, what is the experience that our consumers need, the people that are using our cards, what do they need, and how do we bring technology to bear? This is all about the customer. This is all about the experience to what? Make things seamless, make things frictionless. What we don't want to have people worry about, though, is safety and security, and as well as stewardship of people's data as they flow through these things. So there's something within our DNA, all the way from the top, Ajay, our CEO, all the way into the field, and that's safety and security. Because when you have safety and security, you're not going to be encumbered to have a positive experience. And we want to make sure that that safety and security is foundational, just like the technology and network that runs those rails. So what I like to say is this. We are all in on machine learning and artificial intelligence all in. These are billion dollar investments. These are not bets. A bet has chance to it. And, and trust me, I, I, I'm a data scientist at heart, okay? I spent 20 years of my life just working with data. I was a data scientist before data became sexy, right? So when you talk about unlocking data, the power of data, I have unlocked my sexiness. <laughs> yeah, my wife doesn't believe it either. But these are our investments. This is not a bet. This is a sure thing. We have invested in Brighterian. It is all about artificial intelligence and machine learning with Brighterian and how we can bring that to bear to go beyond cash, to go beyond payments. How can we help with homeland security, anti-money laundering? How can we help there? How can we help the flow of commerce to the terrorist organizations that are out there? That's the investment we've made in Brighterian. We're in. Or the example I want to talk to you about today, which is also very near and dear to my heart, because one of the things I love to do and I have to do is teach people how to make their data more secure and safe. And that's new data. This new data, this experience here that we see here, this was our customers telling us, we like that you have biometrics. You know, the selfie. We like that you can use your fingerprint. But that's very active, right? 
Can you be doing things to make me safe and secure that is passive? And we're going to talk about that with new data. And we're going to walk through an example of how new data does that, how we take machine learning and artificial intelligence and go from the edge to the core, back to the edge. That's what we're going to walk through an example for of. And where it starts, these are the four things that we're looking for when we talk about new data. We're laying in four layers of intelligence through machine learning and artificial intelligence. Device intelligence, have you used this device before? How you're using that device? Behavioral analytics, how have you done things in the past? Are you out of your norm? You know, are you, do you always spend, let's say, $300 at the grocery store? And if you do spend $300 at the grocery store, please invite me to dinner, because I want to see what those groceries are, okay? But those are the things we're looking for, but it's the bottom one, that passive biometric verification. That's not intrusive, but it keeps you safe and secure. And then by the way, we also use it to create profiles where we can say other people who go to the grocery store, are you meeting that criteria, which is about that trust consortium? So all those layers coming together, all those layers using machine learning and artificial intelligence. And here was where we're at. This is where it starts. This is where you need to be. It all starts with the person. Because what do the fraudsters use? They're now using machines, going machine to machine. They're now being able to sit there and say, I can automate my fraud. They're brilliant. Don't get that wrong. They are brilliant. They are just as smart as we are. In my case, anyone is smarter than I am, but that's all right. But here's where we're at. We start at the edge. We start with what? That mobile device. The way you interact with your keyboard, the way you interact with your mouse. And what are we looking for? We're looking for speed. How fast do you use your thumbs? If you're one of my teenage daughters, incredibly fast. If it's me, I am actually a pecker, and which means I peck at my phone, and I peck, and I hit, and I hit fast, right? But that's unique to me. I also look at the way my cadence is. How fast do I flip through pages? How long do I stay? These are all passive biometrics that I'm collecting on the edge as that person is interacting with me. And something a computer or a system or technology really can't, can't imitate. So we start on the edge. We're collecting data, right? What are we doing now? Now the edge starts to meet the core. And when we talk about the edge meeting the core, and this is where the magic happens. This is where you have to have technology to be able to understand what am I seeing in real time on the streaming world? How do I bring that core, that history that I know to, to bear to actually begin to do the verification? So now in the core, I've got a user profile specific to me. And I've built that user profile using what? Machine learning. I've also got what I look at as a population profile, whom I'm going to compare myself against, right? Again, machine learning has brought that to bear. And what I'm now doing is saying, on the edge, I'm now going to compare what I'm getting in real time to what I have in history, which then takes us here. What's happening in that core? Because this is where, actually, for me, as a data scientist, this is where a lot of things happen. And inside of this core, that I'm looking at, I'm actually looking for what? Feature selection. What makes Nick unique? Right? What makes me unique? There are certain things that do make me unique. The way I peck at my phone, the way I peck at my keyboard. I actually, I go through two keyboards a day. It's my job to keep Michael Dell in business, and I go through two or three keyboards every single, on that day, every single year. And they're Dell keyboards, just to let you know. So that's the way I interact. But the other thing is, on my phone, I hold it at a two degree angle which was very telling to me because all those vacation pictures I used to take always were like this, and now I know why. But all that starts to create a key feature that is me and uniquely me, no matter what device I'm using, including your wearable. The way you hold your wearable, how you put your hand down, the way you tap and go, those are all, we call that passive biometrics. That's what I'm learning in the core with, my, with, with the machine learning. And then I start to create those key features. And what I'm trying to do at this point is understand when I'm in the moment, what are those three or four things I need to know that I can put against those key features that will tell me with, with incredible confidence, it's you. That's the safety and security you're looking for. And then 
I've got that biometric profile. Within that profile are those two, three, four things I'm really looking for to make sure it's you. So this has all been done in the background. Now I have to bring that back where? Back to the edge. I have to bring this back to the edge. So what I can tell you is what? I can sit here and look at you and say, hey, guess what? I've got confidence that the device is yours, right? I got confidence it's, it's, that this is a known device. Or even if you come on to a new device, because I have that biometric confidence that it's you, I know it's you. So I got those two things going for me. Now that tells me what I want to know. Do I go? Do I no go? Let the transaction go through. Let the person in the car so they can drive it. Let the person do what they're asking you to do as they're interacting in this digital age. And the other part is the other component. I can say stop, no go. And what I have here is I understand, is it account data takeover? Someone's trying to take over the account. Is this being done with automation? Is this being done with a device that is halfway around the world? Even if they try to mask it, can I try to uncover it? Because that's where machine learning brings to bear the billions and billions of data, the amount of data that we're bringing together to start to create an understanding, some context to it all. And I've got to do that in the edge. Now, if I tell you, I've got to do this in nanoseconds, not seconds, nanoseconds, across 2 billion cards, 195 countries, 76 billion transactions a year. 205 million, it's up now, 205 million per hour. With what I have today, and by the way, in two years, I'm gonna add another 500 million users. Another 500 million people is our goal through inclusive growth that would join this. I can't do this with today's technology, right? But I can through the machine learning and artificial intelligence and the ability to start to look at how that scale works. Because in every one of those transactions I'm talking about, this has to happen in nanoseconds. From the edge to the core, back to the edge. Otherwise, you have a bad experience because no one wants this. What am I doing? I'm waiting for an experience. I'm waiting to see if that transaction goes through. You don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So when you take a look at this over all those billions with a B, that's the goal. And what you want people to understand is not only am I safe and secure, you don't have to worry about the technology behind the scenes. So as I said, if you take a look at what we have to create here, this Lambda architecture, this is where partnering with people like Dell come into play because it's where that core meets the edge, that edge meets the core. That's where the magic does happen. That's where you gotta understand how many GPUs, how many CPUs, how they need to interact. This is where something like Isilon will play very well. You need it to play well. You need that technology to create that seamless world. You want that high performance. You want that reliability. You want that efficiency. You need it, you have to have it. Okay, you've got to have it. The other part to this is understanding, okay, if I get that, what else do I need? Well, I need to actually work with people who can understand the scale of what I'm doing, because this is big scale, and have that experience, and can bring to bear some technology so I don't have to worry about how to architect it. If I told you it could take us 12 to 18 months to architect a solution, that's a lot of time. But if I can go and work with a partner like Dell, and reduce that to what, six months? In some cases, if you look at the ready bundles that are out there, we're into weeks, not months to deploy. In this digital age, that's incredible. That's competitive advantage. And the other part is I'm looking for someone who also has that experience and has that global scale that allows me to share ideas. That's what makes this possible because you can't go it alone anymore. You can't unless you really partner with someone. And you partner with someone you can what? Trust. Just like our customers want to, have, want to have confidence and trust that every time they use a MasterCard, no matter how it's done, through their mobile phone with MasterPass, through the internet, through the card itself, whatever it is, they've got to trust that they can rely on us. It's the same way when we look for our partners. And that's why when I look at this, 
This is what makes this a special relationship because together we can innovate and succeed. And by working together, we can do this. We can start something priceless. Thank you.